This video is brought to you by Don't ever let them put you in a box. Don't ever let them predict your next move. And most of all, don't ever stop motivating them. Cool green clothing, top of the line men's bed oil, coming soon. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you ain't cool and getting the green, you're in the way. And that's just basic. I, I. It's your girl, Mrs. Tony Two Times, and I'm back with another episode of The Baltimore Way. In this video, I'll be taking it all the way back to 1984 to discuss the mysterious disappearance of 39-year-old Stephanie Marie Gant Brady. 40 years later, and she has still not been found. But before we get into this video, please don't forget to hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. And of course, feel free to share this video with everyone you know. Also, if you'd like to see more episodes of The Baltimore Way, please click the link to the playlist in the description box after this video to get caught up. All right, let's get into it. Stephanie Marie Gant Brady was born in Baltimore, Maryland on October 17, 1944. She was affectionately known as Penny. From the very beginning of her life, she was destined to be an overachiever. Stephanie is described as a loving and generous person. She always had a positive attitude. She loved music, playing tennis, and was a believer, with her favorite prayer being the serenity prayer. She was also known for quoting the great Chinese philosopher Confucius, he who has hope has everything. Stephanie was a driven scholar who had a love for her community and people in general. She attended Morgan State University, but left shortly after and joined the Maryland National Guard, where she was the first black woman to graduate as a lieutenant at the Officer Candidate School. She was also one of the first three women to graduate as second lieutenant in the school's history up until 1997. In 1969, Stephanie gave birth to her one and only son, Paul Gant. In 1978, 34-year-old Stephanie was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Stephanie, with her can-do personality, accepted the diagnosis with stride. She went to get her hair done, joined a group that supports the disability, and ultimately decided that life goes on. Despite her physical disability, Stephanie continued to achieve great things. She was commissioned to the Governor's Committee for Hiring the Handicapped. She also was a resource specialist for Baltimore Citizens for Housing for the Disabled. Stephanie re-enrolled at Morgan State and received her bachelor's degree in sociology. Stephanie was an outstanding writer. She wrote a news column for the disabled community in the Afro-American newspaper and wrote the astrology page for a syndicated magazine. Stephanie was full of life, love, and adventure. She went to concerts, danced, and roller skated. She just lived her life in the moment. In her free time, Stephanie coached boys age 11 to 12 in a basketball league team and was an after-school program leader. She also became a substitute teacher at an elementary school and junior high school in Baltimore County. Stephanie was what you would call a perfect mother to her son. They were very close and an important part of each other's lives. Stephanie also extended her motherly love to many other children and young people in her community. Some would say an adoptive mother who was well respected and a pillar of the community. Stephanie was just so outgoing and cared for others deeply. She was an advocate for people and had no plans of ever turning her back on those she cared for. Stephanie was so dedicated to her role as a parent, she attended an organization called Parents Without Partners. 
The relationship Stephanie fostered with her son was her main priority and her inspiration in life to keep going. But then things abruptly changed when Stephanie just disappeared from her home on the 4600 block of Horizon Circle in the Woodlawn area at the time. Stephanie's son, Paul, last saw her on April 1st, 1984. By that time, 15-year-old Paul had decided to move out from the apartment he shared with his mother and her boyfriend and went to live with his grandmother. The last words Paul remembered his mother saying was, I love you. Paul called the apartment and asked for his mother. Stephanie's boyfriend told him his mother had gone to Atlantic City. However, Stephanie had not let anyone know she was leaving to go out of town. It was just unlike her. She also left behind her medication, her walking cane, and her scooter she used to get around. After Stephanie's family got in touch with police, they also reached out to her boyfriend who told them that Stephanie went to Pittsburgh to visit friends. Then the boyfriend switched his story again and said Stephanie went to London to write a book and she didn't want anyone to know where she was. But when investigators looked into the boyfriend's claims of Stephanie going to London, it never checked out. Police found no record of her obtaining a passport. The boyfriend also claimed he had received letters from Stephanie in London, but never produced them to police. Stephanie also never went to pick up her paycheck and just left all her personal belongings behind. On Wednesday, April 8th, 1984, 39-year-old Stephanie Gant Brady was reported missing. She was 5'3", 110 pounds. She had brown eyes and brown hair. She was last seen wearing an opal ring and a pinky ring set with a small diamond. When news outlets tried to reach the boyfriend for comment, he declined. His name or identity was never released. Stephanie's son does not believe that his mother went to London. She would never just up and leave without telling him or her family whom she was very close to. And the way she left was very out of character for her. Stephanie failed to keep a doctor's appointment and with her disability, she wouldn't leave without her medicine, walking cane, or scooter. According to what her son told reporters back in 1989, the furniture in her apartment, her clothes, and her Morgan State University diploma also disappeared with her. He said everything his mother worked so hard for disappeared slowly but surely. Also at the time of her disappearance, Stephanie was working on her master's degree at the University of Baltimore. 40 years later, and there is still no sign of Stephanie Gant Brady. It's like she just vanished into thin air. Investigators did suspect that she is a victim of foul play under the circumstances of her disappearance. They don't believe Stephanie is still alive. They believe her life was sadly taken. Her case remains unsolved to this day. She would have been turning 80 years old this coming October. Stephanie's son went on to have children of his own. Her family still holds out hope that one day they would receive closure and find out what happened to their beloved Stephanie. My thoughts and prayers are with Stephanie's family and loved ones. 40 years is a long time to still be waiting for answers. I wish there was more information on possible persons of interest, evidence, something. Other than the three different stories the boyfriend told family and police, that's all that has been made public. Her disappearance is very eerie. There are no clues, no nothing. Stephanie was just gone. It's hard to believe that such a devoted mother, dedicated community member, and prominent figure just vanishes without any explanation. Is there something more sinister 
behind her disappearance. Fam, tell me your thoughts on this story in the comments below. All right, fam, that's it for this episode of The Baltimore Way. Thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is your girl, Mrs. Tony, two times. Until next time.